So to include the exchange point presentation, I want to have a quick look at some of the subject areas we've been discussing. We'll have a look at policies and politics first. Exchange points have acceptable use policies, which are minimum rules for connection. We've talked about fees. Some exchange points charge no fee. Some are, operate cost recovery. And a few exchange points operate on a commercial basis. Nobody is obliged to peer. Agreements are left to the ISPs and are never mandated by the exchange point. The typical exchange point etiquette is that members should not point default routes to other exchange point participants. They should be aware of how the BGP third party next hop works and only announce aggregate routes. Reading the RIPE 399 and RIPE 532 documents are quite important as they describe the, what is expected by network operators for announcements to the internet. And of course, filter as we've learned in the BGP series, is very, very important. Filter what we send to other peers and filter what we receive from our other peers. The typical features we see at exchange points are redundancy and reliability. After the exchange point starts, quite often we see a second switch being installed, quite often at a second location. A UPS is absolutely essential, and many exchange points will often have a generator to back up the UPS and the public power supply. Support is quite often a feature where there's a network operations center providing 24 by 7 cover. This knock can be provided by the hosting facility or agreed upon by the exchange point members. We usually see DNS, route collector and route servers, content caches, and NTP servers. Location needs to be neutral, secure, and accessible for all members. As for address space, we use public addresses for the peering LAN and public addresses for the exchange point services LAN. An AS number is required if the exchange point operates a route server and operates IXP services. The larger exchange points implement route servers for scaling the BGP mesh. And statistics are very important to be made available for the membership via the exchange point website. As for creating exchange points, no economy or circumstance is unique or different. We quite often see excuses like, oh, we don't need one, or Oh, it's different here. You don't understand. Every locality has its differences. But every locality also wants to keep local traffic local, improve network performance and QoS for the users in that community, and improve the overall internet economy in the locality. The available technology is the same for every network operator everywhere. So there is absolutely no excuse for improving the local internet economy. Exchange points also help develop the ecosystem around them. We create an exchange point association, which is formed by the members who have a port on the exchange point. And the exchange point association is usually what operates the exchange point. The exchange point members meet regularly. They will have board meetings, as well as operational strategy and direction. The IXP technical community could also meet. And these would be the network operators, the folks involved in operating the network and the systems infrastructure within each member. And these meetings could be aligned with exchange point association and exchange point member meetings and it could lead to the creation of a local network operators group. The IXP could facilitate the creation of this NOG, because the same technicians and same engineers are involved in both. A local internet exchange point is defined as a public peering point serving the local internet industry. And local means when it becomes cheaper to interconnect with other ISPs at a common location, than it is to pay transit to another ISP to reach the same consumer base. 
And of course, local can mean different things in different regions. A regional internet exchange point is also a local exchange point, but they also attract regional ISPs and ISPs from outside the locality. The regional ISPs will peer with each other at regional IXs, and indeed they will show up at several of these regional exchange points. A regional exchange point also means that local ISPs can peer with ISPs from outside the locality. They don't compete with each other. It means the local ISPs don't have to pay transit costs. And quite often ISPs of disparate sizes and different peering policies will happily peer with each other because it allows all of them to defray transit costs. And a word about industry associations. EuroIX was the first Internet Exchange Point Association, formed of the exchange points based in Europe. EuroIX also has associate members from around the world. And the EuroIX website shown on the screen has all the information needed to help start an Internet Exchange Point. It also includes the Exchange Point best practice documentation mentioned earlier. In Asia, there is the Asia-Pacific Internet Exchange Association, modeled on EuroIX, and members are from the Asia-Pacific region. It meets twice a year during APRICOT and the APNIC conferences. Other regions of the world also have their exchange point association. We see them formed in Africa and Latin America as well. For further information about interconnects, Telegeography maintains an extensive list of ISP interconnect points. Be careful though, these are not all internet exchanges, even though Telegeography lists them as the internet exchange map. They're ISP interconnect points. Summarizing all of the discussion about exchange points, an exchange point is a layer two infrastructure. At least three players are required. Two is OK as well. Meeting in an open and neutral location. There need to be minimum rules, minimal bureaucracy, and the need to operate on a cost recovery basis. And the industry should encourage participation by all autonomous networks. The minimum requirement for each autonomous network is that they have their own independent address space, their own autonomous system number, and their own transit arrangements. An exchange point is well known and well proven to help develop the local internet ecosystem and are strongly encouraged for all regions of the world.